are in the state of California, upon which Mother Nature has lavished such a diversity of topography that we may find within its boundaries a scenic resemblance to almost any part of the entire world. These sand dunes in the southeastern corner of the state, not unlike the deserts of Egypt, have provided natural backgrounds for many motion pictures. But long before the advent of film production, a wooden road was built here to carry prospectors by stagecoach to the newly discovered gold fields in Arizona. And this is a typical section of all that is left of that old wooden road. In contrast to this wooden relic is the modern highway which now spans the rolling sand dunes between California and Arizona, where the All-American Canal winds its way like a miniature Nile, bringing life and fertility to the former wastelands of the desert. For ages, this desert was non-productive until the genius of man discovered the power of scientific irrigation. And here is an excellent example of the results obtained. The vineyards of California produce about 90% of the grapes grown in the United States and over 50% of the wine consumed by the nation. Another picturesque product of the reclaimed desert is the date palm a species of tree directly descended from palms that lived centuries ago in Palestine, Arabia, and Egypt. Although the annual crop of the date trees is a most profitable one, the ornamental value of the tree seems to be of greater importance to the people of Southern California, who enjoy its beauty and its shade. Here in Beverly Hills, one of the outstanding residential cities of the state, we are intrigued by the novelty of sightseeing on bicycles. During the war, thousands of soldiers and sailors were among those who had the pleasure of seeing their favorite movie stars' homes from the seats of bicycles. And credit for this is due largely to a patriotic citizen of the community who supplied the bicycles, one Hans Ort, the cycle king of the West, who has become famous for his unique cycle tours in the land of the movie stars. Sitting on the front seat of his favorite quadricycle with Mrs. Ort and two other colorfully dressed passengers, merrily pedaling behind him. Hans Ort, a descendant of old Denmark, where bicycles are as numerous as men, commands the most unique position among the unique people of Hollywood. Aside from the homes of celebrities, he takes particular pride in showing off the public buildings of Beverly Hills, such as the City Hall, and traffic is never too heavy to interfere with his colorful bicycle brigade as it rolls its way along the busiest thoroughfares. For our pleasure, however, we prefer the more peaceful avenues in the shade of the sheltering palms. Although Spanish architecture originally dominated the better homes of Southern California, there is now a general assortment of architecture duplicating that of practically every country in the world. Here is a typical example of the English style that has caught the fancy of architects in recent years. And now let us divert our attention to the more open country where ranch life reminds us somewhat of Argentina, Brazil, or Spain. And speaking of Spain, it is fitting that a few words may be spoken here in behalf of the old Spanish families that originally settled in California, including the Carrillo family, from whom descended a gentleman who has become world famous as an actor, Leo Carrillo, the owner of this ranch. On his Rancho de los Quiotes, Mr. Carrillo has endeavored to maintain the traditions of his ancestry, and foremost among these is hospitality. As our genial host, he invites us to visit him, and we are greeted with a typical Spanish embrazo. Aside from his fame as an actor, Mr. Carrillo is a most interesting personality, keenly absorbed in the civic affairs of his native state, the history of which is one of his favorite subjects. That evening, as we sat on the veranda of the Rancho Quiotes, gazing at this glorious sunset, we listened to the stories of old California as told by our host, and somehow they all seemed to blend into the color and the mood of the setting sun. 
Although there is joy in natural beauty as it spreads itself over the earth, to us the real travel thrill in any land comes from those who say welcome and farewell. And outstanding among them is Leo Carrillo of the Rancho Quiotes, who sincerely says, Bienvenidos when we arrive, and adios, amigos, when we depart. With the history of old California still in our thoughts, we now visit the very heart of Los Angeles, where the city itself was founded by the early Spanish pioneers in 1781. It was around this typical plaza that the first homes of the Spanish aristocracy were built, as well as what is now the oldest church in the city. Not far from here is a district known as Chinatown, one of the most interesting of the foreign quarters in Los Angeles. This exotic community caters to thousands of tourists who find in its shops and bazaars everything from precious Chinese art to cheap trinkets, curios, and cocktails. The local Chinese population here is over 3,000, most of whom are descendants of pioneers who came to California in the gold rush days. Women in the dress of old China rub elbows with those frantically following the latest Occidental fashion. Their religion, however, remains the same as that of their ancestors, and they still worship the same oriental gods the Chinese have been worshiping for thousands of years. In California, the distance from China to Mexico is only a matter of minutes, and here we are in the Mexican quarter known as Olvera Street. Considering the fact that the city of Los Angeles has a population of several thousand Mexicans, it is only natural that there should be at least one street in the ancient Puebla that is traditionally Mexican, and it is largely for this reason that Olvera Street is perpetuated. Perhaps the most interesting features are the picturesque costumes and attitudes of the native vendors, as well as the ever-present musicians. This unique street was named after a popular Mexican hero, Don Olvera, who defended old California against the Yankee invaders, the descendants of whom now shop here peacefully enjoying things Mexican. Among the featured articles for sale are serapes, sombreros, baskets, colorful ornaments, and all kinds of pottery, most of which is made in this manner. The potter's wheel was among the first mechanical inventions of primitive man, and it is still in practical use in many parts of the world, turning out vessels in clay that are not unlike those that were molded thousands of years ago. And so time passes in old Vera Street, where yesterday blends with today, and the spirit of song is ever present. And so time limits us to just a few of the many international impressions to be had from a journey around the world in California. Mm -hmm.